good to have you back. Right away, let me introduce my guest. He is a seasoned journalist and someone that um, is versed as well as the matters of the economy of the land and even po the polity uh, are concerned. And so this day, I have him to discuss with me, and who happens to be a colleague, uh, to let's hear the things that have to do with the state of the economy, exactly the way it affects the Nigerian populace. The common man, I say again. Let's find out more about it. Let's talk more about it. And he is John Okoro. Thank you for having me. John, you're welcome again. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you always, you know. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> good to have you. you. Right. right. Uh, Johnny, you look at the state of the economy. It's what we have seen that the way it is, we've seen it, right? But then it has adverse effects on the lives of the, of, of the people who are referred to as the commoners, the common men in the country today. And um, I must tell you, majority of the people fall into that group. And um, this is what is happening. What do you think about it? All right. Uh, uh, truth be told, uh, what we are experiencing today has uh, a kind of, uh, you know, downward uh, slide of the economy uh, didn't just happen. Uh, it didn't just happen, you know, out of the blues and just came as a big bank. Mm -hmm. It didn't just happen that way. Uh, it's uh, as a result of uh, many years of neglect, especially by government, in terms of uh, the right and the robust policy framework uh, that should be put in place to make sure that the economy is stable. And you know, when you are also planning for the economy, you don't just plan for now, you also project for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is the proje uh, projection that also help you to plan for the future and uh, when the future comes uh, because you already have plans on ground uh, nothing nobody will be found wanting mm -hmm. so that is exactly what uh, has happened to us uh, we didn't plan we've never planned uh, most of the plans are basically on paper uh, fired away in different government offices gathering dust and uh, the economy was just left to float that way and that is why today we are feeling this pinch very, 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 very heavy on our, heavy on our shoulders. Uh, however, uh, it is not a thing that is beyond uh, uh, maybe help. Uh, it's not uh, beyond salvage. It is not beyond redemption. Uh, what we expected was that uh, when the administration, when this particular administration came to power uh, last year, that uh, it should have been able to understudy the situation on, that it met on ground before ruling out its uh, economic policies. However, uh, from the onset, uh, the president uh, made some policy pronouncements that actually uh, you know, assisted the economy to even go down the more. I am talking especially uh, on the issue of the removal of the fear subsidy that he announced on the very first day that particular day of his inauguration on the mm -hmm. 29th of May, mm -hmm. uh, 2023. And secondly, afterwards, then you have what they call the devaluation of the Naira or what they call the floating of the Naira. And uh, that again weakened the Naira so, so, so bad that uh, within a period of time, you could see how the Naira continued to slide down, to slide down, to slide down from about 500 Naira per dollar until we were almost hitting 2,000 Naira per dollar uh, <laughs> before some kind of interventions by the central bank and then began to bring it down. I think as of today, it is floating between 1,300 and something, and 1,400 and so, but we still need it to even come down beyond that. So my take here is that despite the fact that I can also tell you that this problem didn't start today, but over the years, we failed to plan that is the situation. But we also expected that this government should have been able to understand the situation and then come out with policies uh, that would have been able to ameliorate mm -hmm. the situation for Nigeria. But rather, it is the other way around. The reverse is now the case. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, there are two things I need to pick out of from what you from what you just said, and um, the first has to do with um, the fuel subsidy removal, as we were told, and as we saw from the very first day, all all of a sudden, the very first day of um, the current president in office. Then. Uh, 
The second has to do with the, the, the value of the Naira and what is happening. But let's go to the fuel subsidy removal first of all. You see, why I want us to discuss this is that um, get to the market and um, or wherever there is any form of trading going on, trade going on, they will tell you, oh, especially the local markets, oh, why is everything high now? Is this, is this, is this fuel? But they forget that um, the trader who sells at any of these markets uh, called in here, let, let's use the ones here in Abuja, or even the one in Lagos or any other place, would need to get, get his goods from the farmer in the village. And the firm, farmer in the village will need to transport his goods or higher goods to the people who will buy and sell, resell to the others. And that you don't throw it in the air and it gets to the next person. It needs to be transported. And so because of that transport going on, the fuel increase uh, affects it. You see what happens these days is that the trader uh, sells according to how he had uh, been able to get the product and adding the cost of fuel for the transport. You see, I have seen people say that a lot. So I don't know. Is there any better way of describing it <laughs> to help mm, our people know, it, understand it? You know, the, the fact remains that, uh, you know, Nigeria uh, is uh, an economy mm -hmm. that is fully dependent on fuel mm -hmm. or petroleum products. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is these uh, petroleum products that uh, form the energy that, that power the economy. Mm. Uh, you need fuel to drive your car. Mm. You need fuel or diesel to power your factories. Mm. You need fuel also to power your homes. You understand? And, mm. all, other, uh, and all other things that uh, you can do with these very important products. And therefore, it is a key factor uh, in the economy, the issue of fuel. Uh, that was why uh, when the whole issue of uh, our refineries, when the refineries began to go down and go into serious dilapidations, you know, people complained, stakeholders complained uh, that, uh, you know, the so-called turnaround maintenance that uh, the government spent billions in carrying out, that it, was, it, it wasn't yielding anything. Working, well, it working. got to a point where the government now had to depend fully on importation of fuel. We send our uh, crude oil to these refineries uh, across the world and they refine them and they bring it back for us. And then you know, the, the cost of bringing At it back, exorbitant the cost of bringing cost. it back, the landing cost and everything, shipping landing cost and mm -hmm. every other thing, then you also factor the foreign exchange, the differentials and everything. So if government had allowed, you know, the market to flow easily to be determined by market forces it would have been so difficult for nigerians to afford the price of fear mm. or uh, at the pump level therefore that was what now brought about the subsidy yes. and there's nothing wrong with subsidy because all over the world government subsidizes so many aspects of the lives of citizens in order mm. to serve as a social net social safety net or social security net for the citizens so there was nothing wrong with the subsidy however there was also, there were a lot of things wrong with how the subsidy was, was managed. Uh, was managed itself. Okay, managed. That was actually led to a lot of corruption that now led the government to start shouting, oh, that uh, we must remove the subsidy no. because it was eating deep into our uh, uh, treasury, mm. uh, into uh, the, uh, the revenue mm. of this country. And based on that, uh, under the President uh, Buhari's administration, you know, a lot of things were done to remove the subsidy. But the President Buhari refused to remove the subsidy. He pushed it over to his the next successor. Administration, yes. uh -huh. And, you know, if you look at it, subsidy was supposed to have been removed sometime last year. Mm. They said, okay, there's no problem. That in 2024, they were still going to budget some money that will last up until June of 2024 mm. to pay the subsidies. Then when the next government comes, the government will now know how to manage the issue of subsidy. So immediately this government came in May, it still had one month remaining to deal with the issue of subsidy, but the government now removed it immediately. And then the thing now caused this upheaval that we are seeing in the, in the economy today. Like you just mentioned, everything is linked 
to, to fear. Yeah. Transportation, I, I, I nearly uh, the cost of fear went up. The cost of transportation went up. The cost of food went up. Everything went up and went up. And it now led to almost this uh, unstoppable spiral of inflation, <coughs> especially Excuse food me. inflation. Mm. Especially food inflation. You understand? So I, I feel that uh, some of these um, policies were a little bit hasty. Uh, uh, I, I thought that what the president should have done was to probe and look into the subsidy regime, how it had been managed, you know, where the loopholes were, mm -hmm. who were those who were not doing what they were supposed to do, then gradually you will now deal with it. Then at the end of the day, by the time you have set up all the cushioning effects mm -hmm. against the expected removal of subsidy, then you will now pull it out. Once you pull it out, the Nigerians will relax. Yes. Because we are expecting that before, in fact, you mm -hmm. remember that uh, under the administration of uh, the former Labour president, uh, mm -hmm. Ayuba Mwaba, mm -hmm. you know, they said anytime the government mentioned about uh, subsidy removal, they, uh, they always threatened strike. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they told government that before you remove subsidy, that you have to put things in place. For example, the refineries must work. You understand? The that refineries must that work. That is why I got a little shocked when I found out that um, uh, the, the current president announced this immediately and labor did nothing said nothing and we were beginning to wonder whether all is well <laughs> with that because if it had like all these things they are struggling for right now if it had started immediately when that uh, announcement was made i think by now we would have settled most of these things mm -hmm. but all the same never too late now that they have come may we still find a good result out of it all uh, it's something that is cheering news is that Dangote refinery uh, pl uh, plants 5.3 billion naira liter fuel storage. That is to say that when we have this, we'll be sure that we have fuel stored. And um, he's talking about um, 600 million liters more storage capacity in the refinery. I think this will go a long way in helping the nation the country when it has to do with this fuel supply system but you know one thing about all this that one thing about these things in this nation is that some people may still attack dangote and ensure that these things he has planned will never come to bear will never happen will never work in our land because i believe that this cabal story that we keep hearing, this story of people who are fighting to make sure that things don't work out well, is still happening. Who are these people? Where are they? They are not spirits. And I know that the people in authority can handle them once and for all and get things to be made better for the common man. Why all this delay? Why all this difficulty? This is my problem. I don't know whether you have anything to say before I get to the next point. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think what I have to say here is on the, the storage uh, capacity of uh, the Dangote mm. refinery. Uh, you know, as we speak now, uh, I think uh, plans are on the way uh, to get uh, the uh, to get um, the fuel mm. uh, running uh, in that refinery because, as we speak today, mm. uh, it's only diesel yes. that uh, people c that uh, marketers can actually lift from the refinery. But I'm sure uh, I heard that uh, marketers are queuing up, uh, registering mm. to start lifting fuel very soon from the refinery. I know it is a uh, is uh, six hundred thousand barrel per day capacity mm. refinery, where which uh, if it operates up to uh, the optimum, uh, it will be able to at least. Uh, cater for the domestic need, uh, domestic consumption of fuel uh, by Nigerians, at least on daily basis. So it's a good one. Yes. Uh, it's a very good one. I expect, even recently, Dangote uh, uh, actually said something that's uh, just in continuation of mm. what you just said about mm. the cabal and whatever. He said mm. that uh, some mafia groups, some mafia, which is also a kind of underworld for the cabal, mm. actually didn't want his refinery to take off. To take off. For reasons best known to them, we know what it is. So uh, we pray that this that government should be able to deal with this mafia and get the refineries working not just dangle the refinery there are also modular refineries that are actually cheaper to run and they are also being stabs of crude oil that's why you know we're having this problem so you mm. have you get the modular refineries working the, the, some of them are already operational now mm, so with their licenses mm, mm. Uh, get them working supply crew to them yes yeah, the, 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 the dangle refinery 
so, uh, gets up with uh, the issue of fuel supply. Mm -hmm. Then let our own refineries. You have two refineries in Poracourt, mm -hmm. Poracourt one, Poracourt two. You have the one in Warri. You have the one here yes. in Kaduna State. Here. Mm -hmm. So at least they say they say that the, the Kaduna refinery will resume operation sometime. They say this year. Mm -hmm. They say the end of the month, and they have also shifted it again to another end of another month. So let's just see how it works. But I think the government should just get it up because by the time all these refineries are operating and domestic consumption is, is stabilized, it's going to help a lot. It's going to help a lot. It's not rocket science. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's keep waiting for it. Uh, there are two things I said that I, I got out of what you said. The second one is the, 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 the dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you talk about seeing things in the market too, and they say, ah, the price of the dollar is high. That's why the price of everything is high. And some people ask, is the dollar what you use to produce your product in the, in, in the field, in the farm? Is the do what has the dollar got to do with Gary? The cost of Gary that has gone so high that now I was told that a, a mudu of Gary is over 1,000 naira. The last time I checked, <laughs> it was 400 naira. At, okay, later I checked again, it was 600. But right now I've been told that it's got up to a thousand naira. The least you can find somewhere is a thousand. And you, uh, you have the white you, you, gary. Uh -huh. You also have the red gary. And, and that's talking about mudu of gary. Mm. Mudu of gary that it contains about um about maybe, maybe five or cups. six uh, 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 cigarette mudu, cups. The big one. Big mudu is about uh -huh. nine cups. Oh, nine but cups. small mudu will give you maybe appro approximately seven cups. I don't know the cup you're talking about. Is it the milk cup? Yeah, the, the small milk, milk cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if you write the milk, the main cup, we know. It's not up to the, that. The, the, the regular milk cup. The, the milk cup. Not Can the you imagine? Cup of, yes. of, of old. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, the milk cup. And we have about six or seven of it, as you said. Yeah. I, can yeah. you imagine? Mm. That's what we now be buying at a thousand and more. Thousand five hundred. Can you imagine that? I don't understand. So, it, what link? What lot link does it have to do with it? Because each time you ask, uh, oil, even oil, palm oil, palm oil that we know will come from the village. They will tell you, oh, no, 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 the price of the oil is high. That's why the price of the palm oil is high. What has it got to do with that? Please, can you help us? Well, you know, um, no, this is this actually in the issue of forex. Uh, it falls within the threshold of macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. However, we can always break it down mm -hmm. for everyone to see. First of all, let, let's even start with the, Ameri with the American dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, why is the American dollars the benchmark for international trade? Yes. Why is it? It's simply because the American economy is very strong, is, is stable. Yeah. You know, it's an economy that you can take to the bank mm -hmm. without being afraid of liquidation okay. or a Fed bank thing. It is steady. It has been proven over the years that it is a very solid and strong, reliable and stable economy. That is why the dollar is the international currency of trade. Mm. That's number one. And uh, if you come back to our own country, Nigeria, uh, at the time, we were very productive as a country. And when we were very productive as a country, our Naira, was also very strong mm. at the time you even had it's a, a time where we even had a naira to dollar naira a, a naira to one dollar being at par yes. even at the time there was even a time that even the naira was even stronger than the dollar mm -hmm. at the time mm. uh, you know but however over the years so because of what i said earlier uh the inability of our government to plan ahead we now became dependent on imports we allowed our manufacturing sector to just die. Yeah. We allowed production to just Become die. And everything became dependent on imports. And for you to import anything, you have to use the dollar to import that. And because your Naira is not strong you know, you know, amongst the international currencies, in the international trade, you know, but you, you, there's nothing, the, the, the Naira doesn't worth anything at the international level, international trade. And because of that, you have to pay more to get this cash dollar. That reminds me, you know, uh, talking about this, uh, you, you see that um, uh, the dollar, that as it is, uh, the Naira as it is, when you want to uh, pick something, uh, the, the manufacturers, when you want to start doing a, manufact a manufacturing of a product, and you find out that what it will cost you to do the manufacture will be so much higher than what will cost you to import, manufacturers will abandon their their products, their, their, their thing, and go outside 
produce it outside and import back into the country to sell. Mm. You see, that way it begins to affect the workforce here because they, considering what it will cost to get to have a uh, diesel to run their system and um, uh, how difficult it would be for them to transport what they have from their factory to the road because of dilapidated roads and all that. They decide that the best thing is go outside, uh, produce it there, whether it's in China or wherever, produce it there and bring it back into the country. Yes. That way it helps to, it helps to bring down our own Naira, that the is value, that, that the is value the of our own Naira. Yeah, so we need to think of how yeah, to get these exactly. things and put them in the right perspective. Yes, Whatever it is that will help, if it's um, the, 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 the power grid, we talk about the national power grid, get to have enough, enough, enough uh, power in the country so that electricity will be supplied uh, efficiently to people so that there will be less suffering for those who are manufacturers. We need to put that in place too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, you know, um, like uh, I was saying, yes. uh, initially, you find out that, uh, let me give you a lowdown of some of the things mm -hmm. that have caused, you know, the exchange rate to go very high because of the high demand for dollar. Mm. You talk about importation of basic goods, basic things that we need in this country, even Things like toothpick, mm -hmm. we import them from different parts of the world. <laughs> and for you to do so, you need foreign, foreign exchange. exchange. Foreign now, exchange. we talk about education, mm. foreign education. Because of uh, the nature, you know, the fallen nature of our educational system today, those who have the affordability, the, the money, who Take can afford to send abroad. their children or send themselves to go out there to go to school, they do so. And how, well, how would they do so? They have to use foreign exchange to be able to pay for school fees over there. Mm. They also have the issue of medical tourism, mm. medical tourism, because of also the fallen nature of our health system. People don't trust the health system in the country again. So they, they want to go outside the country. They want to go to the US. They want to go to India. They want to go even to places like Sudan, Egypt, you know, to take care of their health needs. So now, they will not have to do what? Resort to foreign exchange. Then you also have the activities of dollar speculators mm. who buy and sell and make profits. You know, they actually hoard this money. Mm -hmm. at the time, and at a time like this, when it is very when scarce. When the demand you know, is very rises, high. So, you know, the CBN mm -hmm. has tried everything, you know, the issue of the Binance and mm -hmm. some other uh, uh, entities that mm -hmm. the CBN has tried to deal with. Who are seen even the BDC, mm -hmm. uh, the Bureau of the Change Operator, you found mm -hmm. that across Abuja today, mm -hmm. you know, they have tr they have tried to streamline the operations of the BDC because they also feel that within that particular sector that some people might be spe uh, spe uh, speculating in dollars. But beyond that, the most important thing is for us to look in world, look in world and inflate the economy through the re sector, through manufacturing, production. Once that is done, you don't need all this. In fact, once there's a reduction in medical tourism, mm. once there's a reduction in foreign education, once there's a re reduction in even importation of basic goods, this demand for dollar will go down and then Nigeria, Naira will be stabilized. Thank you so much. And I would have loved to go on, but then uh, because for time we will need to say something else before we conclude. Mm. And um, we're going to talk about this medical tourism some more mm -hmm. but maybe not this day mm -hmm. because uh, a lot is in it mm -hmm. i guess that's what part of what we'll handle the next time we'll be here All right. but then the other one is that i would want us to discuss today is the this uh, 62,000 naira minimum wage that um, the government is offering labor <laughs> and labor lab, labor labor in itself faults politicians and um, for their jumbo pay if 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 it had been that the, in politics today that in for those in government the, 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 the politicians have done anything to reduce the, the their money it would have helped labor to uh, understand but you keep giving the politicians all the huge amount of money you need to give them then you tell the labor member members of Nigeria labor congress and tuc that there is no money to increase them I am not even saying that we need to give them so much. But I know that if the, these other factors, including medical tourism, which I said we'll discuss more at the time, if these other factors are put in place, if hospitals, perfect sound equipment, uh, soundly equipped hospitals are kept here, and those are leaders, from president to governors to ministers to assembly members and all, who 
go to Nigerian hospitals for treatment, they would have gone a long way in saving us foreign exchange. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. Now, if this happens, then you tell the Nigerian worker that everything, we're doing this to make things better. It, it will make sense. They themselves will also be treated this way. Then uh, there is just a little reduction from whatever they are getting as their involvement for uh, at the end of each month would have made the difference, but they have refused. How do you think Labour would accept it? Honestly, uh, as it is now, I think it's, an, it's uh, heading towards uh, some kind of uh, impasse. The way mm. I'm looking at it, the, the whole issue of the minimum wage uh, uh, debacle mm. or debate or saga, anyhow you want to put it. You want it. to put it, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, people have actually said, it, we have heard from different quarters, even including some governors themselves, uh, the former central bank governor, uh, Professor Chukuma who is now the, the governor, governor of Anambra State. He was just speaking some few days ago. And he also alluded to that. <laughs> you understand that uh, at a time like this, mm. when this nation uh, is passing through this kind of economic hardship, that it's also good for that public officers should sacrifice and do at least. He, he personally, he used himself as an example that uh, ever since he took office, that he had never taken salary. That he's been, don they've been donating the salary, his salary to uh, the state. You oh. understand? Okay. So, well, I don't know whether that's just a political statement. Mm. But beyond that, mm. what's important here is that uh there should be some kind of frugality in ex in government expenditures because if you look at it now if you look at it, let me just give you an example of uh, the current budget that is going on just in a minute just okay minute. just you know the, the budget is uh, almost about uh, 30 trillion mm. you on you, you are almost about 28.7 trillion that is mm. the budget the current mm. uh, budget ongoing mm. uh, the current budget now out of that budget half you know out of that budget expected revenue for the year is just mm. about 18 trillion number one then number two this 18 trillion which is the expected revenue will almost more than half of this money will be used to service the concurrent expenditure, expenditure which is just personnel cost yes it's just about people which means everything that nigeria earns as a nation goes into servicing oh, personnel yes, okay. now you have about 11 trillion deficit which nigeria is going to borrow money to yes to because plug uh, that gap, even even, even that gap. the board so, mentioned that federal government adds fresh 500 million the, dollar the uh, world bank the, loan nigeria needs about 11 trillion to plug the budget deficit and the only way you can do so is to borrow Thank you so much. We'll let it be at this point. Mm. The other question we want to ask when we come back some other time is all these debts, all these loans, all these things you're getting, who will pay them back? Well, it's on that note that I will say that um, putting it still on the light, lighter note, I've been told that um, Father Mbaka has said, try and pay the members of the National Assembly and all such people 62,000 Naira one month. Let's see how they will feel about it. Mm. <laughs> I nice. don't know how it will ever work, but then good. that is how we'll conclude good. for today on this program. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, my dear guest and brother, a friend and colleague, John Okoro, Thank for being here Thank on The much. Economy Today. Thank you and as I would not always say, want to say, please come again, because we have a lot to share with you. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, on behalf of everyone with whom I have worked this day, I stand as the face of all that you've seen, all that have worked behind the scene, to say thank you so much for being part of it. And I am Okechuku Onubogo saying we'll meet again on the next episode of the program.